This is Happy Life by uh, Javala de Franco and Spirit Joanna de Angelis. Okay. <clears throat> you may not know it, but you are an example for someone. There are always people observing your actions, even the mistaken ones, and aligning themselves with them. You are thus responsible not only for what you do, but also for what your ideas and attitudes inspire in other individuals. <clears throat> Dictators are arbitrarily people by themselves. Uh, I'm sorry. Dictators and arbitrary people by themselves would never accomplish anything were it not for those who think like they do and support them. By the same token, good works would disappear were it not for those people who identify with them through sacrifice and love. Be careful what you say and do. Encourage followers to elevate themselves and to act correctly. Right. <laughs> I didn't hear a word you said. But it doesn't tell you like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the things that you do. It's like, okay, just be a good person. Oh, okay. I just want to put my hand on the side. You know, we have we all have the within us the the conscience of God. So Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll do a little a little prayer for us. Very short. I love praying. You wanna do the prayer? Oh my god, my lady. I love your prayers. Everybody can and we can all do, okay? Just so you know. This is this is ours. Okay. Okay. So Let's take one conscious breath and allow this moment that it's that we are here together. Let's connect through our hearts and minds. Let's direct our vibration. Let's direct our vibration to connect with our source of energy the Creator of God. This energy of love that is supporting us, that brought us here together tonight. And let the teachings of the good spirits, of our guardian angels, of our mentors, they may be with us for many, many body experiences. May we get inspired by them. And may we feel in our hearts this energy of love coming from above and coming from the source of light and of love that we are all connected to. May we open our hearts and our minds to receive new teachings, perhaps get in touch with old teachings, but they are good for our spiritual development. And may we Get out of here tonight with the spirit of hope and peace. And so. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Donna. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for inviting us. Yes. Okay. So I got some I got some questions. So the skeptic is the second dialogue of this uh, this book that was written in 1859 and was published by Alan Kardec. And this is a dialogue that this is the second person, the second dialogue. The first one was the critic with a very interesting. <coughs> a debate about the introduction and the knowledge of the invisible world and the manifestation of the spirit where this critic was very critic 
about everything that Kardec was saying was very interesting. And now we're going to enter into this, the second dialogue, the skeptic. I love this skeptic, actually. <laughs> it was pretty good. So this chapter starts with um, the skeptic saying that he doesn't know much about spiritism. As we know, in the, the, the Spirit's book was published in 1857, so just two years after this book was published, this one was published. And and it everything is it's brand new, just two years of spiritualism. If we are today and you know, we are still debating about a lot of things about our spirituality, the communication with the spirits, the spiritual the spiritual life, and our science didn't touch that part yet. It's just in the body, and we are not even in the total knowledge of our own body, of the brain, and so many other uh, subjects that we can't explain, I and mean, science, the science cannot explain. So imagine 1857, where the, the religion, religion persecution was still, still very strong in the society. If it still is, to the day, right? Imagine 1857. So we need to take uh, our our mind, our uh, to get an idea of how these people used to deal with such a, um, a difficult topic, which is the spiritism. And so the skeptic starts this chapter saying that he doesn't know much, although. He says here, yet the subject greatly interests me. So now I bring the first question for us to, to talk about. And this is from the Kardec's answer, right? When, when the, the skeptic says that he would like to get to, to talk about the spiritism. And then Kardec says that Spiritism is a, a field of study, and there's so much, a field of study, field. and there is so much to learn, and and my question is about this, the small paragraph I'm going to read here for us. So the spiritism is, spiritism is related to the fields of philosophy, metaphysics, psychology, ethics, and all the natural science. And then I, I want to ask to all of us, what do we know about spiritism, about this, um, this segment of the spiritualism that is bringing a different approach, a more scientific approach of the spiritualism? What do we know about the spiritism? This is your question? Yes. I don't know much, not a lot. I don't know that much about uh, physics, physics either, physical science. We're learning more and more, but uh, it seems to me that what the spiritists of old, you know, the uh, wisdom of Hermes and uh, they, they spoke of this. They spoke of what? Spiritism? Hermes did? They, they didn't call it this. But, uh, but Herm Hermes didn't speak of spiritism and, and communicating with spirits. But no. the spirituality, yes. He spoke of spirituality, and, uh, yes. Exactly. But not of spiritism, which is completely mm. different. Yeah. No, but it's it's a kind of um, it's a way of it's living. It's, it's, but, but it's isn't it more about communication with the spirits and and learning what they are telling us and, and learning how to improve ourselves to 
improve ourselves with each incarnation. It is, and that what he's saying is included too. Oh, I'm not correcting him. Oh no, no, I know, I know, yeah. I know, I know. But I, I never, <laughs> I'm familiar with Hermes, and I have never heard them speak yeah. of communication with spirits to guide us. Oh well, no, no, they definitely didn't. No, they didn't use the word, yeah, but, but the, the idea. When he said when uh, the first principle of uh, in the of the seven principles, the first one was that the entire universe, the entire universe is mental. Mm -hmm. um, so I, they were using different words, and yes. he was using different words, but he was certainly talking about and not the physical reality that everybody thinks is uh, reality. It's physical isn't reality. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's right. perception. He says that the whole right. universe is mental. So, right. they, they, so they were using different words describing what yes. spiritism is. Because of their knowledge on, on natural science, their vision was more expanded than, than ours. And so many others. This is one, but there were also others that... Like computer. I don't know if you're familiar with the Spiritist Network, but we're, we're broadcasting online, so I'm responding to people as they talk to me. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to okay. be doing that. We're going to communicate with people online as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we speak, right now? Yeah. 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 Oh, people okay. are watching this online? Mm -hmm. Yes. So they're writing, they're writing, and you're going to be answering them during the meeting? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So well. anybody can... Um, yeah, sure. there are people that don't have access to any... Um, a spiritual study group, or and they can so access online, like a anywhere where someone can yes. be online. Yeah, yeah that's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. So Scott, you can talk to anyone. Like yeah. So they're joining in on the conversation as we're having the meeting. Yes, they can. Wow. Anyways, what uh, you were yeah. saying? I'm sorry, sorry yeah. Stanley. Now I was saying that the uh, the ancient wisdom that. Uh, <coughs> Practically every religion that's sort of calling itself a religion is based upon hermetic uh, teachings, hermetic philosophy. And uh, I interpret spiritism in terms of what they were saying. Uh, mm. uh, it's just different words. Right. But, but he says that the, the physical world that we see is. Uh, it is, a, is an illusion mm -hmm. in a sense, it's a, uh, and the reality is mental. Now, what, what is spiritism about? Is this, uh, is this mental too, or the way uh, Hermes said it was? You know, that's okay with me. I mean, it, it, it fits. It fits as far as I'm concerned. With the, uh, right. Mm. Mm. My question already uh, is, uh, what do we know about spiritism, or it could be, what do we think about spiritism? So, who else would like to see? You want to say something? You don't have to, but... I don't know, just it's a funny question, the way you say it. Like, like what do I know about spiritism? Well, well, what do you I don't think? Don't just share your... What you from, uh, about from what like, for example, from this from you got from the beginning that you got to to know about spiritism. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What is your opinion? Why? What do you think in general? Whatever that means to you. Well, you know, I mean, I can answer you with it's just a funny question. I think, <laughs> but because I don't know. I mean, I would call myself a spiritist. So. If somebody asked you what is spiritism, what would you say to well, them? Because they ask me, a lot of people ask me that, what right. is spiritism? Because they, they, actually, a lot of times they try to correct me. Actually, that is not the question. What yeah. is spiritism? Uh -huh. Because and then, if you say, what is spiritism? I can give you a pretty concept from Kardec. I'm actually trying to bring up uh, something from, from your heart from your experience, mm -hmm. from what you are connected to your spirituality, to from like, what is the idea? What do you think? Do you think, what is the idea that you have? It is actually a very personal question and not something from the book. Like for example, I would say, 
I will give my answer. Um, my answer is like Spiritism, uh, this, what is Spiritism to me? It is what I know. It's the mm -hmm. teachings from the spirits. And the spirits, they are the old spirits and the philosophers like Newton, Newton to me, he was talking about Spiritism yeah. through his law of physics. Because the spiritism is natural laws. What is the spiritism if not this? We are unveiling the natural laws and we are getting to know more and more all over the world through different segments, through different uh, groups and different uh, people and different ways that they come to bring this knowledge, this, this natural science to us. So what it used to be a miracle that Jesus was doing miracles, the spiritism say, the spirits are saying, sorry to tell you, but there is no miracles. There are natural laws that you just don't understand, you just don't know. And isn't that so, that now we have a lot of knowledge in science, for example, that 50 years ago, it would be crazy. Now we have, uh, synthetic um, skin, synthetic blood. We have things that 50 years ago, they say, this is a miracle. Oh my God, what is this? It's a miracle. No, not a miracle. There's no miracle. It's just a knowledge that yet is not accessed by us. So that's what Spiritism is, to me, is about unveiling a world, a natural science that it is I am ignorant about and and little by little I will get to learn about this natural world that is I am completely blind <laughs> about it and that is very important to me because it's my it's about my spiritual development and my spiritual life can you imagine when it is it becomes a common sense that we all reincarnate that we are not punished by anyone that we co-create our reality that we have free will free choice that our miseries we we are not supposed to blame anyone but ourselves mm -hmm. for our poor choices and and the other things too our happiness we we should you know be happy with ourselves because it's all our deed that's all our work so it's a personal question i tried i totally tried to forget the concepts and the pretty words i know from the books i try to bring something that is more like me but that's what i meant do they discuss predestination at all which i don't tend to believe since we have free will yeah so why do anything hmm. if you're predestined oh, well, to be reincarnated maybe predestined? It's, a, it's a good question because yeah they, they do talk about there's a lot of planning that goes into right. a new incarnation but so a lot of the major things are planned out like maybe like who you're going to marry like who's going to be your, your parents that's the, that's one thing that's those are choices i think yeah i mean you choose that. there are choices but they're all planned with us they're planned out before <clears throat> we okay you know, there are a few things but nothing that it's like 100 percent like you can't change this there is no such thing mm -hmm. we can still change although for example i choose a cancer because i let's say i i smoked all my life and i destroyed my fairy spirit in this area and then let's say the, the my mentor said you need like three or four incarnation with the respiratory problem or a cancer could heal it in one incarnation and usually we say give me the cancer give me the cancer i want that and then when we get here we're like oh i can't handle this so even that even if i come with that choice made by me i can still change i can change everything basically some people with cancer still smoke too and that's true <laughs> so, you know, so right, that tells but there, there are predestination in terms of planning not the predestination like we heard like oh it, it meant oh, to be yeah. has to be this way 
No, because uh, this would be go against the law of free will. Right. That would go against. But predestination in the terms, because words, you know, we're going to talk about We're words. predestined to reincarnate, I think, right? Into, or to... Yes, until we reach... Well, we, the idea we were eternal, we're... Yes, and yes, yeah. So that's the, the, there's no beginning, there's no end, so predestination right. doesn't exist. Right, correct. Yeah. And even reincarnation is, is temporary, too. Yeah. That's right. Pre, uh, predestination, actually, the spiritism is about predestination. Is it? I, I don't know. I yeah, know it because, is. I mean, if we're, we keep yeah. coming back and reincarnating in order to uh, move in a direction, and the direction that we're moving is predetermined. We're going to be one with God. We're going to take, we take a gazillion uh, reincarnation, you know, uh, uh, lives, but, but it's predestined. This is the... It's the free and, it's all, you don't, and you yeah. don't fall back, you keep moving forward. Oh, it, keeps, it keeps us out of the present no, moment. No, no, it keeps, it keeps us you out of the present moment. You can get stuck. You can mess up and go back this too. No, but you can st it no. can uh, stop in a level and not move on. You can. But it, as far as falling back, you can, you can not learn no. your lessons. Not according to... No falling back. No, no. Falling, no, no. falling back. Once you acquire a knowledge, how do you... Unknowledge yourself from that. You can how do, the knowledge. If I tell you this is a tablet, how do you how are you gonna take that from that knowledge from you? What I learned was we acquire all knowledge that we acquire goes with us. Yes. However, what we choose to do with that knowledge is what determines where we go in our next. Oh, but that's something else. But you never lose that knowledge. Never lose it. Never knowledge. lose it. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking no. about. Never lose it. Can knowledge. I ask a question? Because I want to know if I got it right. And I love that you asked that question because that is really helpful for me to edify if what I have is right. And please stop me and correct me where I might have misinterpreted what I've learned here. Because this is all new from everything I've all my previous um, spiritual teachings, religious and spiritual teachings. What I, to address your predestination question, here's what I have uh, assimilated from the information. That doesn't make it right, it just means it's what I got from it. So help me and stop me if I didn't interpret it correctly. Would you mind that? No. Cool. So what I got from predestination is this particular incarnation that we're in, we chose. We, we, we spent a lot of time up wherever we were studying and getting ready enough, yeah. to come on to this yeah. thing. And, and we also chose an agenda. So from that agenda, cause that's the pre predetermined part. We predetermined that. We worked with our... We chose to come here. Well, wherever they're going yeah, to send yeah, us yeah. to learn whatever it is we need to learn for our growth in this particular incarnation. Sure. And from what Cynthia said was, some people might have said to address the smoking issue, mm -hmm. they might have said, well, you know, I don't really want to go in for the hard stuff, so let me just each, each incarnation learn it a little bit. And other people might have said, bring it on, I want to be done with this, let me go for the hard stuff. Now when they get here, because everything is erased, when we get here, we, don't, we or whomever doesn't remember that it's predetermined. Mm -hmm. And like she said, they're like, oh man, poor me, what's going on here? Blah, blah, blah. And we well, get Alzheimer's, the, you lose the your memory. And I don't know if they lose the knowledge. And what is knowledge? It's a very spec. It's what is knowledge? It's, it's knowledge a, of information. What is consciousness? What is awareness? Consciousness and awareness are completely different than. Yeah. Uh, Knowledge, consciousness is, is everything and everybody. Got it. Yeah. yeah. For lack of a better word, certainly. Yeah. But um, that's how I'm perceiving it. So we, we, we chose, we sat down and we wrote our we wrote out our agenda, just like when we go to college, we decide what we want to learn and what are the courses that are going to help us. Sure, I like that. Learn uh, whatever it is we want to learn to become, whatever we've chosen to become. So that so there's predestination in terms of we selected that college, that those courses, that particular agenda. Then from that 
now we, we come on the planet, don't remember anything. That's why we don't remember it, because these are the lessons that we need to learn. Because, for instance, if we, um, I'm just going to share something that I shouldn't because everyone's going to know it, but what the heck, I have to learn to be more transparent anyway. My personal belief, right or wrong, is I must have been a son of a gun in my previous lifetime <laughs> because, whoo, man, stuff keeps flying at me. I must have said, hey, you know what? I'm strong, so bring it on. I think that I'm the kind of person that doesn't want to just mealy mouth through it. I'm the person, the kind of person that says, bring it on, let me deal with it, let me get over it, because I want to move on to my next thing. I don't know if any of that's right or wrong, but I think that must be what the deal is. Now, I sit in my own stuff and say, oh, gosh, I hate this stuff, but I think that I chose it. So that's how I see predestination, that we chose our, we chose our agenda, we chose our particular lifetime, our particular scenario, mm -hmm. but now that we're, we're born into it, now we've got the free will, and at any point we can change our mind. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. is that, did I interpret it? Yeah, well, let, let me not? say something. We are here to add our own wisdom to this group. We actually don't have the right or the power to say what is right and what is wrong for right. someone, just to let you know. Oh, I there would is never do that. From everyone's perspective, you're exactly. always right. That's yeah. why the question is always, the question that One thing we have in common is that we all know what we are talking about. We are just reminding ourselves. We all know because we are spirit and we, we have died so many times and reborn so many times and we know all of this. But it's time now in the era of the spirit, it is time for us to have a better perspective, a better knowledge about this, this spiritual life and not to be so blind and so deaf about our spiritual life. But we can't say that someone is right or wrong just because there is one unique path, which is yours, which, which one. You know what I mean? But what you said, it, it's um, that's how I've it's pretty much what the spirit said. What I've learned it since is, I've been coming you, you here. You were spot on. You were pretty much. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone wants still want to answer? We go to the next question about what you think about the spiritism. If not, we can go. I want to read something else. Sure. Oh, can I just sure. suggest on that? Absolutely. Please. Okay. This <laughs> got it. It, was, it, it's, it seems very important to you whether you're right or wrong. You, know, you, you look for the approval of the, the expert. I'm putting it out because no, 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 I don't no, know if my I criticism. it correctly. This is my criticism. Correctly. I'm just saying uh -huh. this is one of the things that you deal with. And I, and I know that real well because I've dealt with that too. And <laughs> I still do. It seems very important whether I'm right or wrong. And the, to yeah. me, you can never be right with this one. I'll tell you. Excuse me. I'll tell you right now, you can never be right with this one. What? She's from the jungle. Yay! Yeah. I'm making fun of. It's it's. I want to. I want to be sure that I'm I'm perceiving what I'm what I'm taught. Because for instance, let's take we've got one, two, three, four, five. But let's say there's four, and let's say one person's a teacher. We won't say who that person is. That teacher can say since we're talking about philosophical ideas which are nebulous and open they're not like one plus one is two they're, they're open for interpretation so the teacher can can share some information four people will interpret it mm. four different ways this such a good topic she brought and the spiritism is different right the spirit said something else to Kardec right it is time that this knowledge is not gonna come 
within one person's power. Right. He has to be. And there is understanding. And that's we are, why we are the that. teachers now. That's there is no uh, teacher and followers. Right. No more. That's why I'm we enter. That. We enter a new phase of the humanity of the mankind. Mm -hmm. That we take back the power, and we are not following any conscience, mm -hmm. because that's going to be on the level of experience. Because what what is the value if I tell you about my experience and you did not have yours yet? What value are there? This is an empty like. It's an empty experience. You have to have your own experience. I think what so, I was trying to say was not am I right or wrong. It's not about being right or wrong. I just wanted to have it edified was what I had perceived was that what was that what they're teaching. Okay. Does it harmonize with you? Does it feel good when I I've the had, idea? I've I've had so many different teachings. Right. And learned first. I started out with a religious background. Yeah, I thought I, I had a very similar past. That didn't the, work the, the for me. I got to a point where I was like, hmm. So then I went into another area, which actually does work for me. Yeah. It's so what I'm trying to do is blend that with this, and and. How, why don't you make it your own? Blend it and then make it your own. Well, that's what I'm searching for is to find out what is resonates with you. My yeah, personal exactly. yeah. That's the best. That is the best. The best. The best. The best thing is to, uh, to if you you can listen to anyone, but at the end of the day, you got to check with yourself. What is it that you like? Just what you said. What is good for you? To be honest with you, this skeptic was what a wonderful, wonderful. I like it too. Look, that you have that you've selected for us to learn because I don't know about anybody else, but man, it just hits home for me. So I, I was sitting there reading it, and I mean, I was blown away. I was like, gosh, I I definitely have an aspect of skepticism about spiritualism. I have to be honest. I'm I'm not saying I disbelieve it. I'm saying. There are some parts that I still mm -hmm. need to feel comfortable about embracing. Mm -hmm. And there was one question mm -hmm. in there which we'll get to when we mm -hmm. get to it. I want to bring up, which has me really going in circles. In the spiritual centers in Brazil, usually the speakers they say something that here we don't hear very often, which is like in the beginning of the speak, the, they say the speech, they say. Do not believe in any word that I'm going to say here tonight. Have your own conclusions and your own experiences. I'm just bringing you an invitation to take a look at this, but do not believe. They usually, they, that, the, like, that's where I learned from Brazil. So like, people ask that. me, uh, I love that. Uh, do, you, do you believe in God? And I say to them, no, I don't believe in God. I experience God. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. It's a big difference. Yes. Knowing God, yeah. Yeah. I think big, big in, difference. Yeah. I think the big hang up, and it, and it, it took me coming here to to real to come to a personal realization about God. God is such a polarized word that. Everyone has a different feeling and viewpoint and experience of God. I think it's the word God that people get tripped up on. The word God. Because as little children, we learn God is this. And as we grow, we learn to embrace. And we, we, our perception of God is constantly evolving. For me, God is something completely different than what I learned. Well, good that you said that. It has to do with the other question, but Steve, you wanted to say something? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. Good. good that you said that, because I want to ask you a question about this, this short paragraph here. So, Kardec says, I suggest you to do 
some reading in advance because it will provide you with the answers to many questions that may come to mind. Furthermore, such reading will serve both, both to avoid repetitions and demonstrate your sincere interest in the subject. Do you agree with that? Do you agree that in the spiritualism we should uh, look for um, books to begin with? Do you agree with that or not? And why? That's how I started with spiritualism. That, so I, that's, <laughs> when I read that, I actually, <clears throat> I was reading it, I was going, well, I guess I'm doing a pretty good job. <laughs> you know, because um, you know, we were talking about the critic for a long time. And the critic just showed up to the meetings and wanted to. Right. He's like, "Well, I heard this and I heard that, and I think you guys are all full of, yeah, full of it." So, so the skeptic kind of comes. He's like, "Well, I've heard good things, and I've heard bad things," um, and and then he, you know, I'm because I, I only read part of this chapter so far. But he says, you know, Alan Kardec says like, "You need to get the book and, and read it. You know, read our literature." And that's that's how I got started. Was like the literature kind of found me. So I, I was happy on and. This is what I wanted to say before, too, was that when I first started reading the book, I was very enthusiastic because of the way, like, I got the book and I found the Spiritist Center, and it was all, like, too much of a coincidence and not a coincidence. So I was really enthusiastic about it, but at the same time I'm reading it, I'm, I'm starting to think, like, do I really believe this? And, like, am I okay with this one? <laughs> you know? And, right. And, and, like, what I, what I kind of found was that some of the things I wasn't really sure about yet, and some things were, were new to me, and some things, like, a lot of things, I was just like, oh, I know that I already know that, you know. I, I know right. I know a lot of you know right. from, from my other things I tried before, you know, found the literature. But that's I really like dove into the literature hard before I <laughs> before I um I don't know because I, I, I read the spirits book within, like within about a month or so. Um, you know, it's like I probably forgot more than I <laughs> remember, but at least I was like my eyes passed over everything. I kind of have like it's in there somewhere, you know. <laughs> When I need it, it can, I can kind of pull it out. But, but, um, but I think it's important. Like before, before we can like really judge anything, we have to kind of look at it. And, and I guess if I had, I had been to a couple study groups in the past year, where um, a friend of mine showed up, and we were actually studying the spirits book. And we just go question by question. We read a question and we talk about it. And one of the questions was about the difference between the human kingdom and the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. And 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 um, it was I think it had something to do with the way that the book was translated. Was that she had a real problem with one of the one of the questions? Your friend? A friend of mine, yeah. And like she was like, oh, I, I don't like that. And then she like never came back to the meeting again because <laughs> you know, it just she just disagreed. I don't I don't think she actually even understood like what what the question was and actually. There was something in there saying that like this is kind of all for interpretation, but that kind of bothered me because I was like, I was like, well, just because you don't like one thing about it, and it's like really not the most important thing about spiritism right. is because you know, we're talking about like, well, do we reincarnate from animals or do we reincarnate from humans? Is this possible? Right, right. It was like one of those questions in the spirits book, and I was like, to me, this is it's interesting, but it's not like you know, that important. It is important. It's it's important, but it's not like. It's not going to affect like if I decide to like you know how I live my life. It's not gonna, I'm not going to lose sleep over it, you know. Because I was always looking for questions like about morality and how to be a better person. Actually, like why do I want to be a better person? Because it seems like the people that aren't good people like they sleep pretty good at night too. You know, like how do they get away with it? I, I work with a lot of used car salesmen. You know, I oh boy! Like, I, I wonder how they sleep at night. You know? I know. I don't know. Yeah, they, That's they, funny. They drive home in their Bentleys and their BMWs. And Same they, for doctors. They look, yeah. they look happy on the outside, and the inside, it's like, what's really going on? You know, I drive a Honda Civic. You know, <laughs> it's like I'm grateful for. It, you know, but but um, <laughs> it's like for me, like the, the important things aren't the material things. The important things is, is like. You know the bread of life, like where am I feeding my soul? You know, and, and, and so that's that's really what I was looking for. So so when I read the spirits book, there was a lot of questions in there that at the time, at the time I really like didn't care about too much. You know, like the let's say the first pauses and things like that. And yeah. At the time, yeah, it was just I was just like I was like, well, get, tell me the part where I learned how to talk to spirits. Like I want to. <laughs> I was like, where do I get to that part? You're looking for. 
So we're looking for truth. We're looking for pure knowledge, universal spirit knowledge, mm. not not human. Yeah, well, mm. everything is spirit, everything human. But mm. we think uh, the humans are so arrogant. It seems like they think they're so above nature. And I, I think nature is maybe more evolved parts of nature than will ever be. And you can see they can do so much more things. Uh, the eagle maybe can see some so their eyesight and the smell of animals. Uh, we I think we're able to do that, but we're just so arrogant right. and I agree. we're not blending with nature. I agree. And there's consciousness. Oh, they can't think. They don't feel, and that's right. why we kill them. And they don't feel like to kill. It, it, right. I think it's a man is messing things up sometimes. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Too. I agree. Can I address sure, one absolutely. point that it's funny that you brought that point up that your friend um, didn't like that answer because the first time I heard it, I felt the same way. I felt like because I have a belief system perception that is you know a little different, mm -hmm. and there's I I also have read the whole spirits book. The first thing I did when I started coming here is get the spirits book and just go through that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there was a bunch of questions that just what you just said, I was like, wow, I don't know. Okay. What do you, what do you mean? Blah, blah, blah. Do you remember one in particular? Well, just really what Steve said is was a really wonderful example. Because I didn't like the idea that I was I remember told. one, and I want to share after you share. Okay. I remember one the first time I read the Spirits book I want to share. I have quite a few, but just to, <laughs> only because what Steve brought up, I, I, I want to say that it hit, it hit a, a nerve with me as well. Because I had a different um, perception. So, and there's quite right. a few that do not, at this point still, match my previous learning knowledge perception so what i'm working on doing is is looking at it and finding how i can blend it and make it my own yeah. um i will be really straight up front that not all of the answers that he that the cardiac shares i'm comfortable with now I want to hear that you were not comfortable. Can I, can I interrupt? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Please just, do. No, I just, you made me think of something too, because when I was reading the Spirits book, before I found Spiritism, I had a friend that did group channeling. And and I, I feel like she was pretty good, because sometimes she would say things that give me goosebumps, you know, like she, she knew things, and we never, she didn't even know me, and she'd tell me things mm -hmm. that, as if she, like, knew me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I knew that she had some kind of gift, but, like, when I was reading the Spirits book, as I'm reading it and it's giving me these ideas, I'm like, well, either she's wrong about things, or like the spirit's book is wrong. Okay. You know, so I'm, I'm like, so that that's actually what really bothered me the most was like, because I was really into this group channeling. I would go every month and you know, mm -hmm. and actually, and she she does it by donation. So that, you know, you, you put ten dollars and or twenty dollars in the in the basket if, if you want. You know, it's one of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And the spirits are saying like we don't charge for for our mediumship work. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, I said like, <laughs> that's how you do it, I guess, you know. Or, and then, and then it's also saying other things like, because my, my friend, if you ask her, I've done it before. Ask her to channel my cat who passed away. She'll channel your cat. You know? Really? And, and, <laughs> wow. And, uh, she would channel Yoda. You know, Mas Master Yoda. If you asked her to, she would channel Yoda. You know. Kardec says, oh, "Evoke a, a rock, and the rock will answer." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as I'm reading the spirits book, it's making me really ask a lot of questions about right. the things I'm doing. And the worst part about it was that for me it was inconvenient because it's like, well, if I really believe what I'm reading then the stuff I'm doing, I need to, like, let, let it go, you know. So I said, one of these two is in bad, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I really want to, I really want to share spiritism with my friends who are, like, yeah. have, because yeah. I believe my friend has a gift. But then, so I started to talk to my friend. I said, do you, do you think maybe it's possible that another spirit might be playing a game with you when you try to evoke somebody's cat or something and just pretending to be the cat? You know, you know, yeah, that's a perfect and question. That's that's what because that's what the spirit is. Yeah, you know, I mean. you know, there's, there's always a spirit who's willing to you know play around. Yeah. You know, and, and so I and, and a lot of things too. It's like if 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 I was to try to like tell my friend about spiritism, if she like 
if she was o open to hear about it, mm -hmm. it would mean that she would have to like cancel her business. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, right. and it's not my place to tell anybody like this is right or wrong. But like, yeah. for me, it's right. like I I decided like I wasn't going to participate in group channeling anymore. <laughs> you yeah. know? Is Danny want to say something? My understanding of uh, Kardec wrote this stuff, okay, by, uh, and it wasn't that he was using other mediums and their and, yes. and uh, the compendium of, uh, uh, of their knowledge of Yes, and, and mediums so, so, from so, different countries. So it yeah. wasn't Kardec who was, he was speaking, not, it's, no, no. it's the Correct. Those spirits. speaking through very many mediums. Mediums of 13 and 14 uh, years they old. They really agree yep. with this stuff, you know, so, uh, so rather than uh, look at Kardec as being another Jesus, <laughs> I, I just saw him doing a very, very valuable thing. Yeah, uh, me too. Thank you. He actually he didn't want to do it. it. Just because he was so like strict with everything else in his life, because he, he had like, a scientific approach to his works, and he was well known by it, his reputation was really good. And his friends were like judges and, and physicians, and say, so you organized this thing. Right after they realized there was something that was a, a spirit uh, and this a new world, this new intelligence was revealed, the friend says, no, you organized. And he said, no, why me? And he said, no, you, you got to organize this because they trust him so much. And he was so amazing that he invited they invited skeptics, critics, to come and to analyze and to see what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he didn't want to fall into any illusion. But let me let me share with you what what was the question when the, I I don't remember where because I read the spirits book entirely uh, four times, but I don't remember. Any. Uh, so the part that said that one day we will, we will be happy with those internal inner struggles that we have, the inner pain, like the ego pain, painful experiences, we will be grateful to have them. I am like, I will never be happy with pain. Hello? This is never gonna happen. I was like, no, there is no way. I will, I will suffer, and I will be grateful. Come on, that's what I read. What the spirit said. I'm gonna be grateful? No, there is no way. Not in a million years. That's not gonna happen. Well, I was 16 years old. First wow. time I read the book. And later, years later, I realized that that is true. That if I had. Uh, uh, what how do you call this illusion illusion that it, the opposite of illusion is uh, dis not disappointment not disappointment but something else anyway if i have if i had a disappointment or something i was like well i i'm grateful that i'm feeling this because you know this this is my ego this is uh, showing um, that i'm too attached to the situation or this person and that i need to I need to wake up for life. And if, if I had an attachment with something material, and if something happened to that thing, and I would, I would feel horrible, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a materialist. And this, this is painful. This hurt. I don't want that. I, I don't want to feel that. So I was really grateful for the pain. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember I said I would never be grateful for the pain. And then here I am. True. You know, in physiology, if, uh, uh, the endorphins that are produced by our brain mm -hmm. come on in the reaction to pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so, so psychologically, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. When you have the, uh, uh, the the rejection of something that really, oh, I kill myself. You know, he left me or she left me. You know. And mm -hmm. the pain is just so great, so you turn, you turn from the pain. That's true. You turn from the pain, yeah. and 
and you realize that, well, to me, spiritism is dematerializing, okay? I mean, there are two things. There's the material world and our, and our spiritual world. And we live in our material world most of the time. And I'm a material girl. And then, but, to, but when the pain is, gets too tough, it's so you true. turn to your spirit. It's true. And the spirit can overcome it. So in other words, we, we well, so. into this life for me is like spiritualizing my material self, you know, my, my ego. And my, my, I'm spiritualizing my ego. Yeah. And this, it, it's still painful. The pain is pain. But the, but the fact is that we grow from the pain. And that's how it is for me. I was thinking of a saying, I think it might be George Bernard Shaw. Actually, I never actually read any of his books, but um, I heard it during a guided meditation where he said, there's two great disappointments in life, not getting what you want and getting it. You know, and and I've, I've been there before where I didn't get what I wanted and I was so grateful. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, because you know, it's, usually it's about a girl, and, and you know, should I see her with another guy? And I, uh, like that's the first time. That was the first time that I, I had it because I saw her with another guy, and I said, "Oh, thank you for sparing me that pain." Or it's when when you buy a boat. So you <laughs> buy a boat, you get rid of it. Two good guys on yeah. the boat. <laughs> well, it comes out of harmony, and basically all and in nature again, uh, we're all nature. All it's consciousness, nature. You got to simplify knowledge, simplify all of these words, and once you get enlightened or shed those veils, like I was talking about, you realize it's harmony. Um, disharmony is basically disease. Disharmony is pain. Disharmony it all means the same thing. It's you're not harmonizing with nature, and then you start messing with nature and you heat it up and you do it what's not natural or what's not spirits. Mm. And that's when you create a disharmony. Right. And you create a, and then you put it back out in nature, and nature will, either through the sun or oxidation, it will put it back in its to a natural state. Right. And I think we're unnatural in terms exactly. of a lot of things going on with this yeah. human organism that we're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're constantly trying to get that balance that yeah. the material things are kind of impeding that process, yeah. unfortunately, which is wonderful to experience. Yeah. That's some it. some use the metaphor of the Adam and Eve to put that situation Perfect. that once yeah. we were like connected to our spirituality, to the source, to God, yeah. and then we decided to create a world of forms, and then we separated from that. Well, we're never detached. That's the thing. That's that we're taught to yes. detach, but yes. we're never detached. Yes. We're always. We were just creating illusion. Yes. And the world illusion. of forms of materialism. Because we, cre as the spirits, they teach us, we created everything that God is in this world, the, the pain, almost. the happiness, yeah. it's all our creation. Yeah. And we're going to learn much more, uh, the, so we go with the quantum physics and we're going to understand more and more about those natural laws. But yeah, yeah, we are going back, now we are going back to our spirituality yeah. that we once got like disconnected but we're never disconnected as yeah. as you said yeah. absolutely yeah. right never disconnected yeah. not once even you realize that to. the worst things in the world can fall apart you'll know yeah. you're not disconnected exactly i was i was telling this to someone that, that even the the worst worst criminal right. is supported is loved by the same source of love of sure. light he has his uh, guardian angels and mentors they are there with him and one day also this worst criminal will go back to his or her spirituality and we have a single path nobody can walk in my avenue i cannot walk in nobody else's avenue we can walk parallel but this is my path and i will go and the the the, 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 the what the, the way that I walk I forgot the word in English the past no the pace sorry the pace it's determined by yeah. if I want to stop 
and get stuck. I will. If I want to walk, I will. If I want to go through a little bit. You want to be harmonious, you can. If it's so hard, you want to mess up a little yeah. bit. I can walk with my head down and all complaining about how I can look it up and see the beautiful things around. And I see that all the people also are going on the, their avenues. You can harmonize with them? Yeah, this one, this one, I don't like this Respecting the that more. you yeah. will not go in there and affecting their way, even if you try to sure. and say, walk that way and come this way. No, there is no way. The system is so perfect, so, so perfect, that I can only feel what I decide to create. Even if I say, I love you, but I created that feeling. You, nobody has the power to create absolutely like nothing that. in here. The chemistry that is in here, I created. It is, it is amazing. It's mm -hmm. perfect. It's just wonderful. But someone would like to add something before we close for the day? Mm. No? Well, thank you so much. It was wonderful. As usual. That's the end? Yes! Oh. If someone would like to do a short little prayer, it doesn't have to be a prayer. It can be a thought. It can be something someone would like to do. No, I'm looking at you. I no? prayed, prayed yesterday. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, you prayed yesterday. All right. Okay. So let's do a little like 30 second mindfulness meditation. Mm -hmm. The heart coherence meditation. You know how it goes? You breathe slowly and you put your attention to your heart. It helps sometimes if you put a hand on your heart, but it's not necessary. Just feel your heart and then start breathing through your heart. And bring to your mind a face of someone or it could be a pet, it could be someone that only the, to look at that face and make you smile and bring this good feeling to you. Nurture this feeling. Look at this little face and be grateful for this love. And see this feeling coming from your heart and hugging this little face. Be grateful, be thankful. And put your attention back to your heart. And breathe in slowly. 